Hello, welcome back to the workshop. This is the serial number tag for my Atlas lathe. This one was riveted to the bed. I recently got a new bed for the lathe and I would like to put a new serial number tag on it. In today's video, we're going to use an arbor press and we're going to stamp that number into a new tag. If that interests you, stay tuned. We'll get started. Alright, that last one was good. So I know what you're thinking. You're saying, Robert, why don't you just use a set of stamps and stamp them by hand? The problem with that is it's difficult by hand to get consistent, even spaces and to get the numbers to look the same. Getting the spacing right by hand is difficult. The bigger problem with these hand stamps is that they're square. So when you put two next to each other, the gap between them is the same width as a number. When I put together the seven numbers I need, they're too long. They go way outside the box. So instead, I bought a set of type stamps from the Master Car. These are narrow, so that when they're put next to each other, the gap between the numbers is correct. In order to use an arbor press for this, we need a stamping arbor, something that'll hold the stamps. This is the one I made. It turned out really nicely. Here's how I did it. I found a piece of eighth inch steel in my scrap bin. You can see this one's pretty nasty. It's been out in the weather, but I don't think it's going to be a problem. What I want to do is I want to cut this so that I can make a little pocket that those stamps will fit into. So I'm thinking something like this. So I'll cut it across the top for the height and then I'll cut squares out of the corners and then I'll score it. And what that'll let me do is I'll be able to bend these over and then I can weld those. And that'll give me a strong piece that's welded but it's really clean and square on the inside where the stamp's right. That flap disc did a really nice job of getting all the sides to the same height. I'm going to use the mill now to get everything square. Because that part is welded, there's going to be a lot of surface stress. I'm going to use my needle scaler and peen it. Hopefully that will increase its toughness. To finish this, I'm going to use bluing. That will give it a nice appearance and it will protect it from rust. The way I'm going to do this, I'm going to start by dipping it in the acid. That will remove any remaining corrosion, any weld slag, anything like that. It will get it down to bare metal so that when I do the bluing, it will take. 
So I'm going to put it in here, just let it bubble for a few moments. I'm wearing gloves here to protect me from the acid, but also to protect the part from my, the oils in my skin. The finish is pretty good. I mean, it's not perfect, but I, I'm really happy with it. The yellow marks here are just to indicate the back. It occurs to me right now I could have just used this hole, but I didn't think about it. So here's how this goes together. I made this wide enough for eight numbers. My ID number is only seven. So I 3D printed a couple of shims. These are the same shape as the tight punches. The numbers go into this tool and they line up so that this notch is even with this hole I drilled. So they go in like so. Once those are in, I've got this clamping plate that fits in and it contacts a bolt that goes in through that nut I captured and then it will press on this plate and what that does is when that is pushed in it clamps down on the numbers and it holds them firmly in place and then the hole I drilled a screw goes through it and what that does is it just keeps these from falling out so I'll put this together I'm just gonna pick a number this will not be my actual ID number. So the way this works, this is designed to fit into the end of an arbor press and then the arbor press is used to press down on and stamp the metal. My ID tag is half a millimeter thick. I bought a sheet of half millimeter aluminum. It's the same material and it's the same hardness as my ID tag. What I'm going to do is do a bunch of test stamps on this. That way I get it right, I figure out what the pressure is, so that when I stamp the real plate, I know I do it right. So I'm going to use a piece of aluminum as a backing material. And then I'm going to set just a sample piece of aluminum here. Kind of line this up. So that's how that turned out. This is apparently number 1412926. I'll see if I can zoom in and give you guys a better view. I made many test stamps before stamping the real plate. I wanted to make sure I had the pressure and the spacing right and that everything looked good. So the plate I really wanted to show you guys, the one I made the video for, I decided probably wouldn't be the best one to share. So instead, let's take a look at one of the sample stamps. It turned out really nicely. There is some distortion, especially if I used a soft backing plate. I found that using a hard plate like steel worked out best. So that's it for today's video. I really wanted to show you how to make a stamping arbor and how to stamp good, consistent numbers in thin metal. If you're subscribed to my channel, I want to say thank you. I really do appreciate it. If you're not, and you enjoy this sort of thing, well consider subscribing. So with that, thanks for watching. Hey guys, it's me again. Next week's video, I'm going to rebuild a 70 year old German motorcycle engine. This one's unique. It's got a rod driven overhead cam. So keep an eye out.